Shalom, shalom, and welcome back to another DSTM. I am the messenger. And my reader for today is Shalom, Brother Shalom. And Brother Zion. So, hey, we got another one. We got another needed class. Needed class. It's going to be based around the current events. And today's class is entitled Straight is the Gate. Weed ain't the way. Straight is the gate. Weed ain't the way. Right? Um, hey, a lot of our brothers and sisters got that strong homosexual spirit on them. That strong LGBTQ spirit on them. You can't enter the kingdom like that. You must change. You must repent. A lot of our brothers and sisters got that strong weed spirit on them. Drugs, alcoholism, drunkenness. You cannot get into the kingdom like that. All right. Um, and the media is pushing this. They pushing it. They making it where it's just it's just out there everywhere. They even using it real heavy in the industry. In the music industry, you know, the entertainment industry, the sports in industry, the Olympic industry, all this is they taking our brothers and sisters and they bringing them to the forefront to help push this agenda. So all I can say is strap in your seatbelt. If you faint hearted, if you weak hearted, if you easily to be offended strap in your seatbelt because you need to stay here to get this medicine, right? First, let's open up with Malachi 2 and 7 because a lot of people want to know, especially the newcomers, why do y'all call this ministry, this platform, don't shoot the messenger? You got to shout and read it. The book of Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. So the priest's lips should keep knowledge. We are the priests. We can prove that over there in uh, 1 Peter 2 and 9. All right? We the priests, right? Read from the top again. Verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. We should keep knowledge. Anybody that's, that's uh, claiming to be a teacher or preacher or minister, of the Most High, you should keep knowledge. All these Sunday school preachers, if they're not telling y'all what's going on in these current events, and if they're not telling you to repent and still telling you to come as you are, they don't have the knowledge of the Most High. Read verse 7 again. Verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. They should be looking for answers, okay, at his mouth. With the questions that they might have, right? They should be looking for the answers from the priests, the preachers, the teachers, the ministers, the evangelists, the deacons, the bishops, right? Continue. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. For he is the what? For, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Welcome to our platform, DSTM. Don't shoot the messenger, right? Um, Give me that in... Uh, uh, Ezekiel 317. All right. Ezekiel, hold on, hold right. on. Let me grab it real quick. Because some would say, well, why do you care? I had a sister say, hey, on Facebook the other day, why do y'all care? Why do you care? This is why we care, right? Give me that. Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Stop. So we the watchmen's to the house of Israel, right? What the watchman do? He gonna look out. He gonna make sure that everybody is kept in straightly, right? Even um, at home, okay? The watchman is gonna make sure that the door is locked, right? The watchman is gonna make sure that the blinds are shut to make sure that don't no wickedness come in, okay? He's gonna watch out and look out for the people, the well-being of his people. You understand? He's going to warn the people. Continue. Therefore, 
Hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Give them what? Give them warning from me. Give them what? Give them warning from me. So that's what the watchman is going to do. He's going to warn the people. All right. He ain't going to be up on it on playing and giggling and laughing. And he know they in sin. He going to warn the people. Right. Continue. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. And, not, and thou givest him not warning nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way. Start at verse 18 again. Verse, verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. And thou givest him not warning. Stop. And givest him not warning. Right? Okay? And givest him not warning. We supposed to warn him. Right? Read. Nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way. If we don't speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way. Read. To save his life. To do what? To save his life. So we are here to save your life. This is what we here for. Read. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require a dying hand. Stop. So he's going to die. But the blood is going to be on our hands. So we washing the blood off our hands by giving you these uh, these messages, these lessons. Right? Continue. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way. So he warns you, and you turn not from your wickedness. Read. He shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Right? Brother Zachariah delivered his soul. Brother Shalom delivered his soul. Brother Zion delivered his soul. Why? Because we are born of the wicked. So now that we set the tone for the for this class, right? Straight is the gate. Is the gate. We ain't the way. Part one. Because you know I'm gonna have to do three parts. Possible four parts. Because the spirit of this that's going on is real thick. They pushing it real hard. The devil is pushing this so hard right now. The media is pushing this so hard right now. Right. right? That it's going to take a minute for me to get it all out. But let's open up with Matthew 7. We're going to start at verse 13. Give me Matthew 7, verse 13. Shout out. Matthew 7, verse 13. Yes, sir. All right, let me make sure we still record. Probably be pop. Okay, yeah, we're we good. Okay. So, yes. Shalom, give me Matthew, verse 7. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. All right. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. Stop. Enter ye in at the straight gate. The straight gate. Not the crooked gate. Not the in-between gate. Okay. Not the winding gate. The straight gate. Read. All right. Enter, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. And For wide is the gate. Right. Read. And broad is the way. And broad is the way. Read. All right. That leadeth to destruction. That leadeth to destruction. That leadeth to destruction. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Read. And many there be which go in thereat. And many there be which go in thereat. Okay. So enter ye in at the straight great gate the messiah the black messiah is telling you you got to come in straightly right give me verse 14 verse 14 because straight is the gate straight is the gate read and narrow is the way but the way is narrow you got to walk that narrow path you can't be lukewarm okay you can't be here and there to and fro you can't be tossed like that Okay, you can't be funny in between both sides. Read. All right. And narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Which leadeth unto life. Give me top of 14 again. Verse 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. 
This is the only way you're going to make it. Through that narrow gate. You understand? That narrow way. Okay? Continue reading. And few there be that find it. No, many. And few there be that find it. No, plenty. And few there be that find it. And few. And few there be that find it. Everybody ain't going to make it. So keep marching in the in the tombs of this world, in the tombs of Babylon, and you're going to find yourself hit with that lake of fire. You're going to be part of the two-third club. You're not going to make it up out of here. Them chariots ain't going to get you up out of here. They ain't going to swing low for you. You're going to be left right here to burn in Babylon. You understand? Give me 1 Peter 5 and 8. Whoever get it first. Because it's a shame. But this is what be going on. You got it. This is what be going on. You understand? You got to read it. The book of 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Be sober. Be, vi be vigilant. Because okay. Read it from the top again. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Hey, let's read that again because I don't know if they heard. I don't know if they can hear you. Like they say, the ones in the back. Let's say it so the ones in the back can hear you. Read it again. Verse 8. Be sober. No, be drunk. Be sober. No, be high. Be, be sober. sober. Read. Be vigilant. Be vigilant. No, no, no. Be, be, uh... Out your mind. Be vigilant. No, be high out your mind. Be vigilant. Read. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Seeking whom he may devour. So you can't be out here high out your mind. Okay? Drunk out your mind. Trying to drink your problems away. Trying to smoke your problems away. Because you got that devil that's waiting on you. You got that devil that's waiting on you to mess you up. If that devil's in a suit, these Edomites waiting on you to throw you out of whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. They got certain things set up and certain rules. So you can't be high at your mind out here. We talking physical, that physical being in the flesh, the devil. Then you got that spiritual devil, okay, that's out here, that's seeking whom he may devour. He's going to use his, his children to make sure that you don't make it. You're going to get cut off. You're going to get yourself killed. You understand? Give me that again from the top. Verse 8, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for you. And as soon as you hit that weed, and as soon as you get drunk, you know you had a sense of relaxation where that devil can creep in. And your ultimate ending would be death. Once he didn't had his way with you, that's why a lot of people be drunk. They start off, they start off going to a party, they get drunk. Okay? But they wake up. They waking up in a coma. If that's if they wake up, a lot of people get high. They wake up. If they wake up, something is bad that didn't happen to them. They didn't got both of their legs cut off or their arm got uh, decapitated or, or something like that due to why? You ain't vigilant. You're not paying attention. Okay? Straight is the gate. We ain't the way. And when we talk about straight, we talking about that straight narrow path. We talking about your, your straight, um, even in your love relationships. Okay? You got to be straight. You got to have a straight relationship. All right? You can't be man on man. You can't be woman on woman. And that is coming out the Holy Bible. Brother Zachariah didn't make these words up. Y'all say y'all believe in this book. Like I love to say, we're going to see. We're going to see if you believe in this book. 
All right, because these ain't my words. I learned it from this holy Bible. Y'all claim y'all read every Sunday. Y'all don't. Y'all ain't in this Bible. Y'all doing what y'all want. The preacher's taking y'all money from y'all, and he ain't teaching you anything. All right, let's move on a little further, because this also be happening. Give me James. Give me, give me James two. James the second chapter. We're gonna start at verse one. James the second chapter. We're gonna start at verse one. All right. Who already got it first? Read it. All right. The book of James, chapter two, verse one. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. With respect of persons? Because this is what's happening. It's a lot of respect to persons that's going on out here. You figure just because a person rapping is rich. You figure just because a per person run and they rich that you're supposed to have respect a person and you deal with them differently. You know what I'm saying? Then you deal with everybody else or you judge them differently on how you judge everybody else. A lot of people talking about something. Oh, only God can judge me. Right. But you're doing the judgment with who you want to judge. Right. You, you bringing in judgment, you being partial in your judgment. You understand? Continue. All right. Verse two. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in godly apparel, and there come in also a poor man with vile raiment. Stop. So somebody come around you and they got gold. They got the bling bling. They got the gold teeth, the diamonds. They got the new jades on, you understand? Their hair is laid, you know, they just fresh. They fresh in appearance. Versus that man that come in that's poor, that 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 you know got the got the bad clothing on. He might have shopped at uh um the Goodwill or whatever, and he's not looking like this rich man is looking. Read verse three. And ye have respect. To him that weareth the gay clothing. The, start at three again. And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing. That weareth the gay clothing, which is fine clothing, right? But you also, this also goes off into people that's doing a cross-dressing as well, right? Because what we do, you automatically jump into uh, fear mode when you see somebody coming dressing in drag, right? You feel like you have to treat this person a certain way and you have to show respects to this person because you might see them dressed in drag or you might see a woman that's dressed like a stud or whatever. So this go both ways. It's twofold, this word gay. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's a lot of what a lot of people do right now is, oh, there go this man that's, that's part of the LGBTQ community or look at this woman that's part of the LGBTQ community, right? So we automatically get in fear mode because yes, they have uh, laws and you want to make sure that you ain't hating them. You understand what I'm saying? Because of the laws of the land, right? Continue reading. All right, verse three. And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing and say unto him, sit thou here in a good place. Hey, sit over here in this good place. I got a good place for you because you, you looking nice. You understand what I'm saying? You fresh. Continue. And say to the poor, stand thou there or sit here under my footstool. Hey, man, you stand over there or you sit under my footstool. Okay, you sit up under here. Read. Verse four. Are ye not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? Read. Verse four again. Are ye not then partial in yourself, you are partial. You showing partiality. You being respect of persons, right? Continue and are become judges of evil thoughts. And you become judges of evil thoughts, right? Just like y'all giving um little Nas X a pass, hmm. right? You showing partiality in his judgment. You will say, "Hey, son, don't do this. Son, don't do that. Don't be like little Nas X." 
right? But you'll go off in the world and make it like it's all good. You understand what I'm saying? That's being partial. You can't be one way at home and then in the world, you changing it up, right? You can't teach your sons, hey, see what little Nas X did? You bet not do that, but then go off in the world and it's all good. Uh, the track runner, uh, Shakira, Sh Shakira Richardson, Shakari Richardson. Hey, you better not be out there smoking weed on that football field. You better not be smoking weed on that track field, but then go on Facebook and say, hey, oh, you know, give her a chance and all this and that. Right. You being partial in your judgment. Um, then y'all want to say only God can judge me. Yeah. That's hypocrites. Them hypocrite tendencies. You understand? Uh, continue. Verse 5. Okay. Stop. Stop. Um, let's move on a little further. Um, we want this. Hold that. Give me uh, John 7, 24. We're going to come back to that. John 7, 24. You got it, Zion. Read it. John chapter 7, verse 24. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Read it again. Judge not according to the appearance, appearance, but judge righteous judgment. That's what we just read over there in um, um, James the second chapter. Read it one more time. Judge not according to the appearance, but but judge righteous judgment. So when they saying, "Hey, only God can judge us," right? No, you are incorrect. We can judge righteous judgment. We can't judge over, um, over the appearance because someone got a gold ring on, somebody got God, godly raiment on, but we can't judge righteous judgment. You understand? We can judge righteous judgment. All right? Meaning if you cross-dressing, right, we can judge you for that. Okay, we can judge you for cross dressing because you're breaking a commandment. You wearing what pertains to a man, and and and, and vice versa. Deuteronomy twenty two and five. So that's righteous judgment. Oh, you can't judge me. We can judge you. We can judge you according to the law. You understand what I'm saying? Read verse twenty four again. Judge not according to the appearance. But judge righteous judgment. But judge righteous judgment. Now let's go back to James. Let's go back to James 2. Give me verse 5 this time. All right. The book of James, chapter 2, verse 5. Hearken, my beloved, my beloved brethren. Have not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith? And heirs, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him. Stop. Read verse 5 again. Verse 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren. Have not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith? Rich in what? Rich in faith. No, rich in money. Rich in faith. No, rich in gold. Rich in faith. No, rich in Bitcoin. Rich in faith. Rich in faith. Rich in faith. Read. And heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him. To them that love him. To them that love him. Give me John uh, 14, 15. You got to read it. The book of John chapter 14, verse 15. All right, verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Read it again. If ye love me, keep my commandments. What the Messiah say? If ye love me, keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. So, oh, Brother Zechariah, we do show love. No, you don't. You don't show love according to the Bible. You don't show love according to the Bible. Give me 1 John 5 and 3.
Because we got to know and get back to what love is. You understand what I'm saying? We got to get back to what love is. Okay. You got it? Read it. First John chapter 5, verse 3. For this, is, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. That we do what? That we keep his commandments. Read. And his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not grievous, which mean hard. Right? So we got to get back to that love. Now give me uh, James again. Give me that. James, second chapter, verse 5. Because this is this what be happening. Oh, we love her. Oh, I gave him a kiss. That's love. Or I gave him a, a, a plate at the family reunion. Oh, that's love. Or I gave a poor man $5 on a corner. That's love. No, 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 no. Look, love is the keeping of his commandments. The love is the keeping of the commandments. Yes, you're supposed to show brotherly love among your brethren and stuff like that. Yeah, you're supposed to help out your brethren. Okay, you know what I'm saying? But love is not an, uh, a physical kissing and hugging and, and, and a lot of a lot of, of what the LGBT community think it is, is not that. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Love is the keeping of commandments, right? We're going to get that. We're going to get more of that. You understand? Uh, you got it? Read it. The book of James, chapter 2, and verse what? 5. Verse 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith? Rich in faith. Read. And heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him. That love him. Now, we didn't find out what love is, right? Um, Give me Matthew. Give me Matthew 19, verse 16. Let's do that. Matthew 19, verse 16. You got it? Read it. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Read. Verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the command. Do what? Keep the command. Do what? Keep the command. If you want to enter in life, you better keep the commandments. Read. Verse 18. He saith unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Read. The young man saith unto him, all, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. Go and sell what you have and give to the poor. Right? So God, the, uh, 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 um, the Messiah says, sell what you have. You understand? We, we give too much stock of, on people that got material things mm -hmm. and earthly riches and, 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 you know, big houses and nice cars. Okay? The Lord don't care nothing about that. The most High God don't care anything about that. He care about your obedience. Your obedience. We're going to have all that in the kingdom. Right? You're going to see the streets of paved and gold. You're going to see the many mansions. You're going to see all these things. Right? Read. All right? If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Thou shalt have what? And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. No, you're going to have everything you ever wanted here. And thou shalt have, have treasure, treasure in heaven. heaven. We're going to have treasure in heaven, which is the kingdom that's coming here on this earth. Okay? When the Messiah get here and set it up. You understand? What verse you want? Um, I got to finish it. Read. And come and follow me. That's okay. it. Uh, what, what verse you on? In the verse 21. Okay, we're going to stop at 24 because okay. my, my page is ripped right here. Okay. But read. Ver, uh, verse 22. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful 
And for for he had great possessions. Oh man, he didn't want to give up anything. He had great possessions. So a lot of people ain't gonna give up their fan base. A lot of people ain't gonna give up their career. A lot of people ain't gonna. A lot of these preachers ain't gonna repent. Why? Because they used to getting their ties money. They ain't gonna tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They ain't gonna give up these great games. They gonna keep y'all poor in, in the hood. They're going to keep riding up on y'all in that Cadillac. You understand what I'm saying? They ain't going to do that. They ain't going to drop these things for the most high. Read. Verse, 20, verse 23. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, That a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. That a rich man what? That a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom no, of heaven. No, he going to make it in with flying colors. That a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. He's going to hardly make it in. So all these people, we esteem out here to be great. They going to barely make it. These one percenters that control all the world's wealth and all the banks, they going to barely make it. It's not going to be a lot of them. Reread that verse again. Verse 23. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, That a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. They're going to hardly make it. Read. Verse 24. And again I say unto you, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of it's God. It's easier for a camel to go through a hole Read that again. And, and again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Through the eye of a needle, through a hole, right? Because if you look over there, at, uh, you know, in some of them uh, uh, Arab countries, them Arabic countries, right? The, the camel have to dip down, stoop down real low to go through them little tunnels and stuff, right? Okay, so it's, it's very hard. It's going to be very hard. For you to enter into the kingdom. Read. All right. To go through the eye of a needle. Then for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Then for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. You're not going to make it. It's going to be very hard for you to make it. The, the pickings for a rich man is very slim. You know why? Because they feel like they got everything. They feel like they didn't made it. They feel like they don't need anybody. They feel like you can't tell them nothing. They real cocky. That's what they are. You understand what I'm saying? You got the little Nas X. Oh, he's out there being real bold. You know why? Because he got some money. You got the Shikari, Shikari Richardson. Yeah, I smoked. Yeah, you know, I was going through things or whatever. I smoked or whatever. Yeah, it was hard for me to cope. Which, we all go through things. And yes, we didn't been there. A lot of us didn't smoke some weed. You understand what I'm saying? But we can't be using these excuses when when we dealing with the word of God. We got to do what the most high God say. You understand what I'm saying? We can't be out here doing what the world say. Or we can't be going in our own uh, feelings and things and deal with things our way. Because you lack faith. You lack faith. Okay. You know, you're supposed to be a Christian. A Christian is supposed to be a follower of Christ. You understand what I'm saying? So the Israelites are the real Christian. But no, we out here, we being talked about, persecuted, you know, called hate groups and all these different things when we only simply living by the Bible. So this is what happens. Oh, they get real emboldened. Oh, I did it. Yeah, I did it. And what we do, we go out and support it anyway. Oh, give her a chance. Let her run. Let, let her run, man. She doing so good. She doing this. She doing that. But we want to throw the rules out. And that's how it is with the Bible. Oh, forget the Bible. Let her run. Forget the Sabbath. Let her run. Forget that she's out there in, uh, uh, in draws because that's what they running in. Right. She ain't dressed modest according to uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 9. No, forget that. Let her run. Forget that she uh, smoking weed, First Peter 5 and 8, where 
Uh, the Bible tell you, the Most High tell you to be sober minded, be vigilant. You understand what I'm saying? So they putting our sisters, our brothers on the forefront to push this. And they giving them passes now, which I would, which is shocking. Because they still giving them passes to do this thing. But that's going to help more of y'all to get into that. They going to suck more of y'all in with that by using them. You going to go get more tattoos. Leviticus 19, 28. You breaking that commandment by mark marking your body. Okay? You're not letting your light shine. You not. You don't want to wear your natural uh, uh, God-given hair. Because you're right. seeing this sister right here with all the flowing weave down her back. All these different colors. So don't think that it's all good. The oppressor, the oppressor think that we are entertainment to them. Oh, run, nigga, run. Look at her run. Ooh, she can fly. Look at her, look at her horse hair uh, flying in the wind you, behind her. You seen that meme? What's uh, that? It went famous. I just seen it this morning. It said, if it ain't crack, let her run track. See? They already making memes. Uh -huh. I seen one. One was like, uh, what you gonna do when Shakara, uh, Shakari Richardson run off with your bag that you just sold Wow. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Wow. So they already mocking you. Our community mocks you for doing it. And they don't even be repentant. They just being trying to be funny. And then you got the other nations mocking us as well. Yeah, it was the other nations that had posted this one. I'm talking about. There you go. It's the other nations that posted this one. You understand what I'm saying? So read that ver that last verse again. All right. Verse 24. And again, I say unto you. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. There you go. That's out of the mouth of the black Messiah. Okay? You have a shot. You understand what I'm saying? Let's, let's go back to James. Give me James 2 again. This time we're going to start at verse 6. Okay. You got it? Read it. The book of James, chapter 2, verse 6. But ye have despised the poor. You, you have what? But ye have despised the poor. But ye have despised the poor. Who are the poor? We are the poor. Us as a nation. Who on the bottom of, 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 of the map? We are. You understand? Read. Do not rich men oppress you? Don't the rich men oppress us? We are being oppressed right now. We're being oppressed in the streets. We're being oppressed on our media. We're being oppressed in our homes. We're being uh, oppressed at uh, barbecues. We can't go do nothing. We can't, we're being oppressed. We can't even go for a run or a jog. You understand what I'm saying? We can't even go jogging these days. Read. Do not the rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? And we get the police call on us. Right? They oppress us and, and, and call the police on us. Right? Continue. Verse 7. Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? Don't they blaspheme our worthy name? Don't they blaspheme uh, theme Israel? Right? That's what they doing now. They blaspheming the name. Saying, hey, they this, they that. Which we only carry in the name of the Most High God. The Most High God gave us. We getting rid of our oppressors' names and we are, um, our surname is ourselves Israel. You understand what I'm saying? All praises to the Most High. 40 years, my name been Israel. I had Israel, my, my parents named me Zechariah Israel. First and middle. That's how we was doing it then 40 years ago. Okay? But now everybody's sur surnaming themselves now. Israel. You understand? Continue. Verse 8. If ye fulfill the royal law according, according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Read it again. If, if ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We should love our neighbors as ourselves. And what we going to do? Hey, we're going to warn them. We're going to be the watchman. That's love. We're going to give them that godly love that it speaks about over there in John 14, 15, and uh, 1 John 5 and 3. That's love. And numerous other scriptures. I'm just pulling a couple, right? Continue. 
ye do well. Ye do well. Read. Verse 9. But if ye have respect to persons. If ye have what? But if ye have respect to persons. Oh, it's all good. You know, uh, Shikari, she good. She smoking weed. She breaking commandments. Oh, she even got a girlfriend. We're going to get off into that. We're going to get off in that. She got a girlfriend as well. Pride month. LGBTQ. Read. But if ye have respect to persons. Ye commit sin. Ye commit what? Ye commit sin. Ye commit sin. Right? Read that from the top again. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin. Ye commit sin. What sin? Transgression of the law, according mm -hmm. to Romans uh, 6. No, no. Uh, 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 1 John 3 and 4. You understand what I'm saying? 1 John 3 and 4. All right, you you transgress in the law. Read. All right. But if you have respect to mer but if you have respect to persons, you commit sin. Read. And are convinced of the law as transgressing. You transgression the law. Transgressing the law. Right. First John three and four. Matter of fact, let's get that. We got a little time. We got a little time. I ain't gonna get I'm gonna let y'all get it. First John three and four. Okay. You got it read. First John chapter three verse four. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Read it again. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Go back to James. Two, we're going to jump down to 14. All right. You got it? Read it. Book of James, chapter 2, verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works? Oh, you got faith, but you ain't got no works. Oh, Lord, you know, the sister ran up there on, um, and hugged her grandmother. Okay, it wasn't nothing wrong with that. The grandma I've been praying for. I know her family praying for her. I know she got people supporting her, right? So they got a lot of faith, right? Continue. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works? He ain't got no works. Read. Can faith save him? Question mark. Can faith save? Can faith save you? Can faith save him? Little Nas X. Can faith save her? Shikari Richardson. Because. You didn't. You had little faith. As soon as you got the news, you went and sparked up the blood. What would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So you you you. As soon as you got the bad news, you went and sparked up the blood. You're supposed to have faith that the Most High is gonna make it right for you. We can't be run running to these substances, man, and start abusing ourselves and defiling our temple with these things. Right? Continue. Verse 15. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace. Hey, go in peace. Okay? Go in peace. But you see them eat, uh, just naked and eat food. Read. Be ye warm. Be ye warm. Read. And filled. Be filled. Go be warm and be filled. Right? Read. Not, notwithstanding. Ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. Uh, but you didn't give them no help which need to the body. And we talking about our brothers and sisters here. Right. We ain't just talking about any old random person out here that's begging for money on the corner. That's another thing. Jump back up to 15. Verse 15. If a brother or sister be naked. If a brother or sister be naked. Your brother and sister in spirit be naked. Your brother and sister in Christ be naked. You understand? Okay. Jump back down to uh, uh, read 16 again. And one of you say unto them, Depart in peace. Be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? What doth it profit? You didn't give them nothing. Right. You just said something. You just said something. You didn't give them no physical food. You ain't give them no uh, spiritual food, no bread, no milk, no water. You understand? 
You didn't give them no meat. You didn't give them anything physically or spiritually. Because sometimes you might not have anything, but you can give them the word of God, which is going to fill them. You understand? Read. Verse 17. Even so faith, if it have not works, is dead. Read verse 17 again. Even so faith, if it have not works, is dead. Is dead. Being alone. Being alone. So you can't have faith without works. You got to have faith with works. You understand what I'm saying? So a lot of these athletes be, oh, I got faith in God. But soon as something happens, they break down. They got to go sniff them a line. They got to go smoke them some weed. Okay? That's just like me at my job. You know. And yes, I, I am the boss of my area. Of, of my region. But still, I'm not finna have no problems. You understand? And then say, I'm going to smoke me a blunt of uh, effort. This effort. I'm gonna give me a blunt of that effort. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's what they basically hey, it's just smoke your problem away. And right. then I go on the job and I'm high as hell. Right. Verse 18. Yeah, a man, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. I'm gonna show you my faith by my works. So when things get rough. I ain't gonna go smoke no blunts. When things get tough, I ain't gonna drink no hard liquor and get drunk. Right. Yeah, you will see me a little wine on a video. I'm at home, here at home, uh, 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 whatever, you know, might have or something for the feast. Might even give me some strong drink, but I ain't gonna get drunk. Right. Drinking ain't a sin is when you get drunk. You understand what I'm saying? Right, so I'm gonna show you my faith by my works. So you saying you have faith, but you run out there and the first thing you do when you have a problem is turn to some kind of drug. You understand what I'm saying? All right. And oh, we legal. Okay. But yeah, right. According to the law of the land it's legal, but according to the scriptures, it's not. Right. It's not. It's not meant for you to smoke it. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, you know, oh, we legal. So was it wrong according to the law of the land when it wasn't legal? You see what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you still got to bag it up. Thus said the Lord. But they might say one minute is illegal and might say the next minute is legal. So what you going to do? Right. Mm -hmm. What you left with? You left nothing but these scriptures to fall back on to make sure you're doing the right thing. Just like the sodomite stuff that's out here. Just like sodomy. Uh -huh. We're going to get that. If I don't get it today, we're going to get it. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, give me the next verse. All right. Verse 19. Thou, believe, thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. The devils also believe and tremble. So you believing in God and you ain't got no faith by works. What that mean? The devil believed, but he trembled. You understand? Continue. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Faith without what? Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. You understand what I'm saying? So this stuff, little Nas X Tom about and... You know, he dancing on the devil lap and all this and that. One minute he on Sesame Street playing with the kids. The next minute he's dancing on a, a so-called devil lap, which they did a great depiction on him because he is red. You understand what I'm saying? Then the next minute he's somewhere kissing on BET when the whole world watching him, especially our community, is watching him to help push this agenda. That's not even ran by the black original owners that was running this uh this this television network. It's ran by Viacom and you know, and they doing some other things with this uh channel. You understand what I'm saying? So they're using these individuals that got some kind of influence. Right. 
right? They doing it from all different generations because you got D Wade's son. He's getting all everybody in that in that age bracket. Okay, you got Shakari Richardson. She's getting everybody in that age bracket. Now they showing that hey, it's okay to smoke a little weed and run. Okay, we're going to get into that. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of hearing people say we ain't good for you and it's not. It's not. We're going to get all that. You understand what I'm saying? And, and you got uh, uh, this Lil Nas X character. Don't know what he want to do. Mm -hmm. He on Sesame Street one day. He doing all this. He just everywhere. Character. So like I was telling him on Facebook, which Lil Nas X you gonna subscribe to? Cause he's showing you about three of them. Right. You understand? So yes, we got to monitor these devices and we got to monitor, monitor our children to make sure that they are going in the right direction. We gotta make sure that they going in the right direction. Direction, okay. Give me First Peter's four. I'm gonna start at verse one. I got it. You got it. Read it. The book of First Peter, chapter four, verse one. For as so much then as Christ have suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. We supposed to arm ourselves with the same mind. Okay, we got to have that same mind. Read. For he that have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin. If you suffer in, in the flesh, you're going to cease from sin. You understand? Not run into some kind, some kind of pain medicine. Not run into some kind of weed or some kind of suppression. Where's your faith at? You're going to have to suffer in the flesh, Right? That's if you're losing your mother, your grandmother, your father. You're going to go through a little suffering. And then I don't be knowing why a lot of Christians be doing all the, you know, the crying and stuff anyway. Because they automatically put their loved ones in, in, in heaven when they die. Right. They automatically say, oh, she with, she with God now. So why are you crying for your loved one if you know that she's in a better place? Because no, your spirit know that you got to be judged. Judgment is coming. The ultimate judgment is coming for all of us. Everything grandma did, she gonna have to be judged. Everything granddad did, she he gonna have to be judged. Everything we doing in these flesh bodies, we are going to have to be judged. We are gonna be judged. Continue. All right. Verse 2, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men. To the lust of what? To the lust of men. Read. But to the will of God. But to the will of God. Read. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness. When we walked in lasciviousness. Read. Lust. Lust. Excess, excess of wine. Excess of wine. That's what they rock me in. Lasciviousness. Lust. Ex excess of wine. That's getting drunk. Right? Lascivious. Strong uh, sexual desires. Lust. You understand what I'm saying? Read. All right. Excess of wine. Revelings. Revelings. That's them parties. Read. Banqueting. Banqueting. That's more parties. Read. And abominable idolatry. And abominable idolatry okay that's following up behind these other gods right. bowing down to these idols worshiping these things that's not of the lord you understand what i'm saying continue reading verse four wherein they think it's strange that they that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot don't run with them to the same excess of riot read Speaking evil of you. They speaking evil, evil of you. Read. Mm -hmm. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? Who's going to give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? Mm -hmm. You can't give account. Read. Verse 6. 
For, for, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead. The gospel is preached also to them that are dead. Read. That they might be judged according to men in the flesh. That they're going to be judged according to men. That they might be judged according to men in the flesh. But they want to say, can't nobody judge you. Right. Read. But live according to God in the spirit. We got to live according to God in the spirit. Read. Verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober. No, be drunk. Be ye therefore sober. No, be high. Be ye therefore sober. Read. And watch unto prayer. And watch unto prayer. We got to be sober and watch unto prayer. Okay? That's what we got to be doing. That's what we got to do out here. Why? Read verse 7 again. Verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. The end of everything is at hand. This place is going to be over with. But you want to go out here and get high. You want to go out here and get drunk. We're not supposed to be doing these things. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to get... Uh, give me 1 Peter 5 and 8 again. All right. The book of 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil... As a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So, straight is the gate. We ain't the way. Read that again. Verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Straight is the gate. We ain't the way. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Let me get that. So I just went back to the same. I'm ending it out with the same one I opened it up with, basically. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. You got it? Read it, Shalom. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? We the temple of God. Read. And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? You're supposed to have the spirit of God in you. Not no weed smoke. Not no... Access of Ciroc, Jack Daniels, uh, tequila, Henny, Hen, Henny, there Hennessy. you go. Yes, sir. You're supposed to have the spirit of God in you, not no uh, syrup and ecstasy and lean, lean and junk. pills and whatever it is that you're doing. I don't know. I don't do drugs. Read. <laughs> right. Verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. God is going to destroy you. He's going to destroy you. That's verse 17. That's not the end of it. Read. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? You the temple of God. You got to leave that holy. All right. Now, if you feeling bad, yeah, you can go to the herbs. It is herbs out here that's for medicinal uh, purposes, for medical reasons, right? right? It's herbs that you go to, but you're supposed to eat the herb. You ain't supposed to fire it up, light it up with a blunt or backwoods or a, a, a swisher or, or a Garcia Vega or whatever it is you're smoking. Because once you hit it, it turns into fire, which light, lights cartilages, which defiles your temple. But there are medicinal things that you can go to, and that's the herbs. Give me uh, Genesis 1 and 29. And we're going to end it on there. This is going to be the end of part one. <clears throat> All right. Page 129. Genesis 129. You got to read it. The book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. Every herb bearing seed. Read. Which is upon the face of all the earth. So it's upon the face of all the earth. Right? Every herb bearing seed. Read. Which is upon the face of all the earth. Read. And every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. Read. To you it shall be for meat. No, for a blunt. 
To you it shall be for meat. No, for uh, for you to go out here and get high as hell. To you it shall be for meat. It's going to be to you as meat. That's what it's going to be for. It's going to be used as a herb, right, for you as meat, not for you to smoke it up. It's herbs out here. You got, um, what's the one, sea moss. You got um, all kinds of things out here. Mandrake. You got uh, um, dandelion tea. You got uh, all kinds of, all kinds of all herbs. Kinds of I can't even name. Okay, you got just just to name a few. I'm not real good in um, the, the the medicine world or whatever, but we got some brothers out here real heavy in that. That's gonna help you with your depression. That helps with anxiety. That helps you with you know cravings for this and that. The Most High got the best herbs you need to help you with your ailments. All right. So straight is the gate. We ain't the way, part one. And this is going to conclude our lesson for the day. All praises to the Most High. Okay. Um, uh, shalom, everybody. Happy Sabbath again. We got to get ourselves prepared for what's to come. We got to repent. Come back to these law, statutes, and commandments. You understand what I'm saying? We are the Israelites. The Bible speaks of, the Most High speaks of. You can read about that in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse 15, all the way down to, uh, to the 68, which is the prophecies that what happened to our people. You understand what I'm saying? You can re read about that in Lamentations uh, 5, okay? Um, in various other places, Genesis uh, uh, 49, right. uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel mm -hmm. just, just the name of a few, uh, Jeremiah 17 and 4. You understand what I'm saying? Um and it, it, it expounds more into, you know, what happened to us and, uh, and and who we are as a people. You understand what I'm saying? So, I hope this video was edifying. I hope it strengthened your walk. I hope you are repenting daily. I hope you are dying daily of your old self and coming into the renewance of being new creatures, being the renewance of Christ, the renewance of our black Messiah. Right, and we got to repent and get away from that old man. We got to lay down the, that old body, okay? So, like I always love to say, remember, don't shoot. I am only the messenger. Shalom. Shalom.